This Health Ranger Report Pandemic Podcast is brought to you by naturalnews.com for uncensored reporting and healthrangerstore.com for lab-tested preparedness supplies such as storable food, full-face medical masks, biostructured silver first aid gel, and iodine, only while supplies last. Update pandemic.news February 25th, I think. I can't keep track of the days. Can you? It's Tuesday. I think that's February 25th. Today we're dealing with the pandemic denialists. We have a rising contingent of people who I call kind of the flat earthers of virology who are saying that this whole thing is a hoax, that there is no virus. And among those people is Rush Limbaugh. Yeah, Rush Limbaugh on his radio show yesterday said that this thing is just the flu. And that it's being weaponized by the left-wing media to attack President Trump. What? What, Rush? What? The same left-wing media that is downplaying this entire thing and refusing to report that it's a pandemic? I, I don't... I, where, do you, where to even begin? It's, it's, it's especially difficult, given that Rush Limbaugh, in his own way, on the political scene... Is a is a patriot. He's a he cares about America. He's a thought leader in his space. He he loves his country. He loves the founding fathers. He he loves America and he loves his audience. And he he would never deliberately mislead people. But he is just flat out completely uninformed on this topic. And you know, there are very few people who can understand a lot about a very wide number of areas, politics, economics, medicine, science, uh, history, and so on. Most people are specialists. And Rush Limbaugh is a specialist. He's a specialist in politics. And he's not a virologist. He doesn't understand epidemiology. He, he did not even graduate from community college. You know, I'm not, not trying to insult the man. He's brilliant in his own way. And he, he's, a, he's an incredible patriot. But he's not, I mean, understanding this requires some academic background. Uh, This is why I can talk about this with credibility, because I I own a laboratory. I work in a lab. I run mass spec instruments. I'm the founder of it. I'm a published scientist in a peer-reviewed journal. I'm the author of a number one best-selling science book called Food Forensics. And even though I'm not a virologist, and I don't claim to be, At least I can talk about concepts of science. I understand exponential growth. I understand what R naught values mean. I can do the math. I've been mathematically gifted, I suppose you could say, since I was a child. They actually had me in the gifted and talented program (laughs) at the same time that I was on the varsity football team, which confused everybody. My fellow football players would ask me, like, like, what do you do on the, on the math club team? Like, you just sit around and do math? And then when I'm in the math club and we had math competitions, I kid you not, where we would take a bus ride to other school districts and we would compete in math contests in, in a giant indoor arena. And more often than not, I won first place. Not all the time, but a lot of the time. And the math club people were like, what do you do in the football team? You just like, you just like run around and play football? And so I, I was in these two different worlds, and neither world could understand the other world. And I find myself, the reason I mention that is because today, the way I, I operate in society today is kind of the same thing. I can talk with a group of scientists. I can talk about epidemiology and virology, uh, genetic engineering. I can talk about organic chemistry. I can talk about uh, mass spec analysis. but then I can also go over to the political people and I can talk about politics and the Constitution and the Bill of Rights and the history of the United States and the Founding Fathers and the body politic. And I understand those two things. But often those groups don't understand each other. So once again, for some reason, I end up being a person who can traverse these, these different areas and kind of explain at least the big picture uh, in both areas. I'm, I'm, I'm not... I'm not the absolute expert 
in any one area, but I'm someone who has competency in a wide variety of areas. And sadly, Rush Limbaugh is not one of those people. And so Rush is an expert in his area. He doesn't understand health, which is why, by the way, he's going on, he's probably undergoing chemotherapy right now for his lung cancer. I pray for him. I hope he's okay. But I also know where these things go again, because I'm informed like you, you know, the minute Rush Limbaugh goes under chemotherapy, sadly, he's going to have permanent brain damage, permanent kidney damage, permanent heart damage. And he's probably not going to be with us very long. Sad to say, because he, he is a treasure for this country in his own way. But it just goes to show you, you can have experts in one area who are oblivious in another. You can have a brain surgeon who doesn't know the ingredients in a hot dog. And you try to explain to the brain surgeon, who, who's obviously a smart individual. I mean, he or she is a brain surgeon. And you say, well, that hot dog contains sodium nitrite. And the sodium nitrite, when it combines with the hydrochloric acid in your stomach, it forms a class of compounds called nitrosamines that are very potent cancer-causing chemicals that cause colon cancer and leukemia and bone cancer and brain tumors. And they will say, what? No, that can't be true. No, the FDA wouldn't allow that ingredient if that were true. You see, because they're a brain surgeon, they can explain to you, oh, this is the hippocampus. You know, they can, they can talk about this is the frontal lobe. These are the blood vessels that, that provide fuel to the brain. And they know all that stuff, but they don't know what's in a hot dog. So you have a brain surgeon that saves somebody's life, removes some giant brain tumor or something, and then on lunch eats a cancer-causing hot dog. Because most people are specialists, not generalists. Most people don't know what they're talking about the minute they get outside their area of, of experience. You know, same thing, rocket scientist, we say. What is that guy, a rocket scientist? It means is he's some super genius person. Yeah, I know rocket scientists, actual rocket scientists. And rocket scientists are brilliant in, in physics. Some of them have backgrounds in mechanical engineering or aeronautical engineering. They are very, very smart people, but most of them know nothing about nutrition. So yeah, you can be a rocket scientist. You could, you could send a rocket and put it into orbit around Mars because you understand the acceleration of gravity, orbital velocity, all these things, but you could still die from cancer because you don't know that eating processed meat causes cancer, you know, because of the sodium nitrite and so on. But look, the, the point of this is there's so a lot of experts out there who are experts in their areas, and now they're all suddenly trying to comment on the coronavirus, and they're, they're ignorant when it comes to the coronavirus. They, they don't understand the math. You know, th this was, a friend called me the other day, and he said, yeah, people don't understand exponential math. <laughs> like, you're telling me. <laughs> he, said, he said, look, if I asked you, if I said this, there's a Petri dish and, and bacteria in the Petri dish. Uh, double their number every minute. And the Petri dish is 100% full at minute 60. Remember, the, the, the population doubles every minute, and it's 100% full at minute 60. And then he said, at what minute, this is the question, at what minute is the Petri dish halfway full? And I said, well, of course, 59. Of course it's 59 minutes, because it doubles every minute. He said, yeah, you know that. Nobody else knows that. I'm like, what do you mean nobody else knows that? People don't know that minute 59 is when it's halfway full? He's like, no. The average person thinks it's 30 minutes. And I'm shaking my head like, what do you mean? You just explained that it's an exponential growth. It doubles every minute. How could they not know minute 59 it's halfway full? He said, because people don't do math. People like Rush Limbaugh, sadly. He's not a math guy. He's a good guy. I'm not trying to insult him. I don't mean any ill will at all. I pray for Rush. He's, he doesn't understand math. He doesn't understand the exponential spread. And then the harm, or at least the potential for harm, comes when you've got people like Rush or other denialists who start to comment on this as if they know everything. I mean, Rush on his show says that he's 99.8% accurate. I don't know if that's just like a satire gag or something. I don't think anybody's 99.8% accurate. I'm not 99.8% accurate. I try to be 100%, but nobody's that close to 100%. You know, we're doing well to be 95% accurate 
it, it, when we start making these predictions about long term, you know, where the numbers are going to be three months down the road, <laughs> no one can be 99.8% accurate. And Rush certainly isn't, sadly. Uh, not about this issue. He's out there saying it's just the flu. What he's doing is he's discouraging people from taking this seriously. And if you're not taking this seriously, then you're not going to understand that, that, hey, maybe you should cover your mouth when you cough. Maybe you shouldn't shake hands with people at church anymore. You know, stop all this close contact stuff because we're in the middle of a pandemic. And this woman in South Korea, she, she spread it to 900 people now, I think, because she went to church. I guess they hug a lot there or something, but hey, it spreads through the air too. But I don't think Rush even understands that. A lot of other people don't understand it. So you have all these denialists who are saying it's fake. Does that mean, what, is South Korea faking this too? Is, is Italy faking this? Did they put up fake roadblocks to, to shut off 12 towns with armed police, like military roadblocks? Is that all faked too? Why would Italy fake this? Why would South Korea fake it? Why would Taiwan fake it? Why would Singapore fake it? Why would Malaysia fake it? Why would Japan fake it? Why would Iran fake it? Why would Egypt and Croatia and Iraq and Switzerland and Spain and all the places where this has been detected, why would they all fake this? People are dead. They're running cremation ovens 24-7 in China. Are they faking that too? I've seen videos of people leaping from buildings, committing suicide. Are they faking that too? No. If you think this is fake, you need to have your own head examined. Frankly, it's, it's like, what? It's the flat earth theory. I'm telling you, it's flat earthers of the pandemic. Now, some people think the earth is flat. And there's a, there's a guy named Mad Mike Hughes. He's a rocket scientist. He built a rocket and he put himself in it. He built like a steam engine rocket. Pretty smart guy, actually, in terms of the mechanics and everything. Well, he launched himself from the rocket and, and he died which, by the way, tends to happen a lot with home-built rockets. Just telling you, just sharing that little factoid there. If you build a rocket yourself, don't sit in it. But he, he said he's going to launch himself up to high altitude so he could see that the Earth is flat. Well, imagine his surprise. I mean, if he had succeeded, he would have been in low orbit, and he would have been, oh my God, this whole thing is a sphere. But he didn't make it, the parachute sadly came off at launch, and he ended up in, well, really a, a, a gravity-assisted uh, plunge back to the Earth, because gravity is real. Uh, he, he was able to confirm that, sadly, with his own death, and flat earthers don't believe in gravity, by the way. They, they think it's something else. I don't know, like magnetism or something. Who knows? But he's dead. He's dead. I'm sad for his death, by the way. I'm not mocking him. I'm, I'm, I, I admire anybody who's willing to take a big leap, I guess in his case, literally. But I mean, really, pe people who, who ask the big questions want to explore the universe. We should all be more like or have his uh, inspiration, let's say, even if his conclusion was wrong, his, his, his motivation was pure. His ideas may have reached the wrong conclusion, but he, he at least went for it, man. Go for it. Instead of sitting around on the couch all day, letting the TV tell you what's real, go do something real. Yeah, he's dead, but better than living like a zombie, sleepwalking through life, watching CNN. So, you know, kudos to, to Mad Mike Hughes. Sorry to see him go. Just a reminder about parachutes. <laughs> and, and <laughs> uh, well, one half mass times velocity squared is the kinetic energy. and. Uh, uh, there's a lot of mass when you're sitting in a rocket and you're plunging toward the earth nose first. All that mass is behind your ass and that mass is coming through you when you hit the dirt. So the, if you ever needed a reminder that physics is real, uh, check out that footage. But again, I'm not mocking him. I'm, I'm, I'm sad that he, that he left our planet uh, without achieving what he was trying to achieve. It would have been so much cooler if he would have been... Like he came back and, and the parachute worked and he floats back to the ground. And he gets out. He's like, yep, the earth is round. Yep, I saw it. Okay, mission accomplished. That would have been even more fun. Frankly, I, I would have loved to see that. But nevertheless, bottom line, uh, people who are denying the existence of this pandemic are, I think, uh, well, I want to be careful. Uh, I'm not trying to insult people, but 
they're wrong and they're not rational. So there, there you go. That's my take on it. You can read more, hear my podcast, watch my videos at pandemic.news. Mike Adams here. Stay informed, follow my work, and I'll help you stay alive for real. Because we're not going to sit in rockets and launch ourselves into sort of low orbit or attempted low orbit. We're going to help you stay safe on the ground and survive this thing because it's, it's going global. Thanks for listening. When it comes to prepping, you not only need good products that can help keep you alive, awake, aware, and nourished during difficult times, you also need products you can trust. At the Health Ranger store, we do extensive laboratory testing using an in-house lab that's ISO accredited. It's inspected, it's audited. It's a two-year process to even get that accreditation. We use multiple mass spec instruments, state-of-the-art science, I'm a published science author as well and a patent holder on several technologies, some of which we use variations of in our lab. The purpose of this lab is to help you make sure you get clean foods, superfoods, storable foods for emergency preparedness and survival use. We have a certified organic lab tested, what's called Ranger Bucket collection of storable foods with some survival gear in the buckets to help you even boil water and cook those foods and so on. It's a, a fantastic product. We can barely keep it in stock even during normal times. In a crisis, we'll be wiped out of this product because it actually takes us a lot of time to make those products. But if they're in stock, you can get them now at healthrangerstore.com slash prep with Mike. In fact, go to that URL, healthrangerstore.com slash prep with Mike, and you'll see some of our survival and preparedness supplies, including iodine, colloidal silver products and gel first aid products, storable foods, superfoods, medicinal herbs for first aid, and much more. We have a lot of products for you to help you be self-reliant, to be safe, to survive difficult circumstances, natural disasters, and all kinds of things. If you want to get prepared, do it with us at the Health Ranger store so that you know you're getting safe, clean, laboratory-verified preparedness foods, supplements, and other related products. Again, the URL is healthrangerstore.com forward slash prep with Mike. All one word, no spaces. Prep with Mike. I'm Mike Adams. Thank you for your support. Thank you for watching. If you want to support our mission, visit us at healthrangerstore.com for the world's largest selection of lab verified superfood and nutritional products for healthy living. It's at healthrangerstore.com.